Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or as we like to say here at Shady Acres Woodshop, howdy! Today we have Norwegian Maple. This comes to us from longtime viewer and friend Dave at Calmwood Creations. This piece came from Dave's own tree in his backyard when he used to live in Portland, Oregon. I visited Dave and his wife Claire a couple years ago and stood next to the tree this came from and now I have it. I've uh, considered it here for quite a little while. To me the most important part is right in this area. Right in here. I just love the way that wraps around like it does. So I want to preserve that. I'm going to make a vase. I'm trying to determine if this is the top or if this is the top. I know. I know. It looks good either way, doesn't it? Still deciding. Still deciding. Hang on a minute and we'll figure it out together, okay? Okay. Did you vote while I was gone? Who's the winner? Narrow bottom, wide top, wide bottom, narrow top. What's it going to be? Oh, okay. I hear you. I hear you. Wide top, narrow bottom. Got it. That's a hole for my woodworm screw. Now we'll take it to the lathe and get it mounted up. People have a lot of trouble with uh, woodworm screws. And I, I understand it. I don't have trouble with it, but I understand the trouble they do have. I love them. I love them. They hold really, really well. However, this is uh, end grain, and end grain does not hold screw threads very well. So what I did, you saw me drill the hole. I put CA in the hole, rolled it around like that so the glue would cover all surfaces. Gave it time to dry. Then I screwed it on here. And while screwing it on, this is an important point. I, I, I've answered questions about uh, woodworm screws before but I don't think I ever made this point. Uh, you need to apply a lot of pressure towards the woodworm screw as you're screwing it on. You can't just haphazardly screw it on because what will happen is you won't be making any forward progress into the hole. You'll just be peeling, peeling away the wood with the screw, uh, screw threads and pretty soon the hole gets bigger than it needs to be and it won't hold. So th this is important. You need a flat spot for these jaws right here to set against. That's crucial. Crucial. It doesn't have to be a full flat spot, but it has to be more than half. So anyway, so I, I screwed it on there, backed it off, put more CA on the now threads that are in there. I don't know if you can see those threads, but they're in there. I gave that time to dry, and now I'm going to screw it on for the last time. So you have to apply pressure towards the chuck. Now I've already made the thread so there I'm not applying as much pressure as I did the first time but I am applying pressure. Like I say uh, end grain doesn't hold screw threads very well and that's why I put the CA in there. <clears throat> but this isn't a giant piece and I think that's gonna hold just fine. I am going to use tailstock support and what I like to do is spin the piece up a little bit and then advance the live center so that it finds its own hole that it likes and apply some pressure and then turn the speed up and see what kind of speed we can get. Well it's pretty well balanced, about 780 RPM for now. Due to the diagonal cut on here, I'm going to have to shorten the piece some. Um, in order to get enough area here for a tenon on the bottom. I have a general shape in mind. I'm going to try and keep the bark around the top for now. It might not look good, so if it doesn't, I'll get rid of that too. I'm not going to make any attempt to keep the bark on. I hope some stays, probably in this area right here, that part that I want to keep. I might be able to save a little bark right in this area, I'm not sure. But other than that, I'm not going to try and keep any bark on. It's, it's fairly tight, but it's not tight everywhere. We're going to be turning at 780 RPM, 5 8 inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on.
Well, I guess I'm going to have to go shorter than I want. My tenon's going to be here, about two inches in diameter, and I just don't have anything over here yet. So I got to keep going up. Slowing the speed down, getting this out of my way so I can cut it off. Yeah, we're just about there. And yes, I could have cut this off in the beginning with the bandsaw. I also hate to take more off than I have to. This way I can gauge it better. So let's see what kind of tenon we've got here. All right, we, we have enough for a tenon, but we don't have anything for a base around that tenon. All right, I, I can live with that. We've got a base everywhere, but right here. And we still haven't turned anything on the outside yet, so it's gonna taper down. We won't have this big area right here. We might have some. Now I just wanna cut that little nub off again. I guess we'll go ahead and start shaping the outside in this orientation and I'll, I'll switch it around later. Now I have to be careful with my shaping because I don't have that big of a, a base down here for this to set on. So I can't just go in there willy-nilly. I've got to keep that constantly in mind because I just don't have a lot of room. So it's going to require that I stop off and make sure that I'm not cutting away my base. I'm, I'm just about there and I haven't hardly turned anything. I'm okay so far, but it's not much of a shape. Well, maybe this was a mistake. I've made them before, kind of used to it.
Not much turning going on, and I've, I'm losing my favorite part. Well, dang. Well, I don't know what to tell you. I'm going to stop and think about it for a bit. It's the next day. Yesterday, uh, I turned the camera off at this point. I said I wanted to look it over and think what I could possibly do with it. I spent about two hours. <laughs> Okay, I went in and got some coffee, checked my comments, came back out, looked it over, walked around. I give up. I just give up. This one's got me beat. I've never ever done this before. I don't even know how to react to myself. I, I'm disgusted with myself. I can't think of what to do with this. I simply can't think of any practical use for it except a pencil cup. That came to mind. And let me tell you, once you get pencil cup in your head, you can't think about anything else. Plus, the piece has some issues. You know, every time I thought, okay, I'll do this, then I saw something. It's got a pretty good sized crack here. It's got some additional cracks up this way. Crack here. The bark here is coming off all the way over here. So I thought, okay, I'll just, I'll just taper it down right down to here. But there's just not enough difference between the bottom and the top to make any sort of a shape. I think this uh, diagonal cut on here is what threw me. It made me think that the bottom was much narrower than the top, but it just isn't, it just isn't. I, I'm, just, I'm just at a loss, so I give up. I'll save it, I'll pick it up now and then, I'll look at it, see if I can't make something out of it. But it's time to move on. So what I'm going to do is fix one that I turned, uh, I don't know, about a month ago probably. And it needs some fixing and that's what is up next. Some of you may remember the mushroom box that I turned, uh, I don't know, three, four weeks ago. This is what needs fixing. See that cool X in the top in the lid? It's just a natural X. I didn't put it there. Anyway, I made a slip fit for this lid. There was no play in it, but it went on easily, and that's what I like. And now, I had the forethought to uh, leave this thick because I thought this might be an issue. So while it was in the house, drying for this past month or so. I, I would try it every now and then and it worked and it worked and it worked and then it didn't work. And now if I put it on there, it'll lock right on. I had a heck of a time getting it back off. So I need to turn this down some. So I'm getting set up for that. I can show you the difference here. We've got two and a, two and one sixty-fourth. I don't know if you can read that. Two and one sixty-fourth. And if I just turn it around here, now we have two inches, two and a sixty-fourth, two and a thirty-second. So it's off by a thirty-second of an inch. So it isn't much, but it's enough that it just won't fit on there anymore. I can actually see, you probably can't, but I can see the oval shape that this is. It's longer right here this way than it is this way. So I'm getting set up to do that and what I've done is I've taken my live center from the tailstock of course, it swivels. I want this to drive this piece. I want to just slip this on here and, and drive this piece, but it swivels. So the reason it, it comes with this bar that you can slip in here so that you can unscrew this and put different things on the uh, threaded end inside here. But I can't have this on here. See, that locks it down. But I can't have that on there because as the piece, as the headstock turns, this will go flying out of there. So I'm going to take a cotter pin and slip that in there and just open it up a little bit. And that'll keep it from coming out. And now I can drive it with that. So I'll bring up my tailstock here and get my tool rest set up. So I put a different live center in the tailstock end and I'll just slip this over here and I've got this little block of wood that I'm going to use to apply pressure. It's just a cut off from something else. Now the hard part is I need to find the center of this bottom. And of course I can't apply a lot of pressure because I'll split this opening apart. So just a small amount of pressure, which means it might slip while I'm trying to do some turning here. I'm not sure if it will or not. Adjust my tool rest. And I don't have much room here, so I'm just going to use a parting tool. We'll spin the piece up about 700 RPM.
And I just want to bevel this edge here just a touch. See if I've touched all the way around here. I don't know if I can even tell. You know, I don't think I got it straight. It's, it's a little bit wider at the bottom part of this. And it's, it's pretty much just a guess. I'll just have to fit it on, see if it's good. If not, I'll have to redo it. Okay, we're back in business. And there's one more thing we can do while we're here. If you have a live center like this with an aluminum cone, you know that your, your tool bumps this once in a while and puts some scratches in there. So I've got some, uh, this is 180 grit. Actually, I'm gonna put a mask on. I don't wanna be breathing aluminum dust. So I'm just gonna see if I can't clean that up a little bit. And then I'll use some 240. Then I've got some 600. And there we go. Nice. So what have we learned today? Well, we learned sometimes you get beat. This one just beat me, that's all. It just beat me. I just don't know what to do with it. Uh, I'm, I'm ashamed. I'm sorry, Dave. Sorry to let you down, buddy. Piece of your tree. But we might come back to it one day. Maybe I'll be a pencil cup guy for the day. I'm not sure. Just wasn't today, that's all. And we learned sometimes you have a success. Yay, I can put the lid back on. Works for me. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I read all of them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop, signing off.